Today I'm going to be showing you how to send a mobile live stream to your home PC via an RTMP server. And uh, a perfect example of why you'd want to do this is say you're streaming all day, uh, you're tired, but you want to go get some food and you don't want to lose your viewers. You want to bring them with you. And you don't want to be like, hey, I'll be back in 10 to 15 minutes because you know that that's not going to work. Uh, so I'll show you a quick example. I'm going to go live on my phone and we should see it pop up through our RTMP server. And now I just kind of get rid of my camera and I switch audio, get rid of my desktop audio, switch to my phone audio. And here we should be ready to go. So we switch here, boom, we're ready to go IRL. We are ready to go out. We can go out to the restaurant. We can go out and do some work on our tiny house, whatever you got to do out there. And you don't have to lose your viewers now. You can keep going. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do this. Uh, stick around. It's a little bit of a lengthy tutorial, but it's 100% free. So uh, hang in there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is set up an RTMP server. And how we do that is go through Amazon Web Services for a free EC2 tier eligible service. So I'm just going to go to AmazonWebServices.com and uh, the links below and you're going to need to create an account and they will ask for a credit card but they won't charge you since we're sticking with the free tier eligible servers. So I've already created an account so I'm going to sign in and we're going to go to launch a virtual machine with EC2 and uh, click that and you'll see that most of these say free tier eligible but if you want you can just check that just in case and we're gonna go down to Windows Server down here and it'll say 64-bit and go ahead and click select and then you'll see here uh, choose an instance type make sure it's the free tier eligible it's the only one on the list so then we'll go down here to next configure instance details and then we're just gonna head over to configure security group so we're going to set a couple of rules here. Uh, the first rule we're going to add, click add rule, and we're going to go down to HTTP. And we're just going to add port 80, and then uh, which is already there, add, and then HTTPS 443. And then our last one we're going to do is a custom a, uh, TCP rule here. And we're going to put that to 1935 for our Nginx server. Uh, important part here is make sure all of these are checked to anywhere. Uh, to make sure you can actually access them from anywhere. You'll get a warning here. Don't worry about it. We'll deal with that later. Review and launch down in the corner and go ahead and click. And then you'll see a bunch of details here and then just uh, continue and launch. And uh, right here you'll be greeted with a key pair. Give it a name and download that file and we'll deal with that in a little bit but make sure you hold on to that. So then you're going to click launch instance and uh, this will take a little bit so uh, I'm just gonna give it some time you'll see it's launching and we'll go over to view instances and uh, we're gonna wait about five minutes here and make sure everything checks out go ahead and give it a name in the meantime whatever you'd like I'll just call a server um, and then so here you'll see that two out of two are finally done this took about five minutes and we'll go ahead and connect so after you click connect you'll be greeted with uh, this window that says get password and that's where you need to choose that file that we just got, the server file. So uh, go ahead and choose file, go find that path, click it, and then uh, open. And then we'll go ahead and click decrypt password. And that'll give you the password for your server. Go ahead and grab that and just put it in a notepad just in case you'll need it uh, in the future. It's definitely good to hold on to, so just save it. Great, so now that we've saved that, we're going to hit um, Download Remote Desktop, and that's how we'll access our server. And so go ahead and uh, show that in the folder. And I like to just drag it onto the desktop because we'll be using it for a little bit here. Okay, so go ahead and right click that and click Connect. And uh, we're going to click Don't Ask Again and Connect. And then we'll have that password that we need right there that we just saved. So I still have it copied. I'm just going to paste it in. If you need it on the notepad, go to your notepad, grab it, 
and uh, make sure you don't ask again. This just makes it so we can connect and not have to go through these windows over and over. And we're going to start connecting to our Amazon server. So that took a while. I uh, went and skipped ahead. Now we need to turn off Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration. For some reason, it's been giving me issues when I launch these servers. So I just go ahead and turn it off. Here's how. So click on Turning Off Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration. And you basically just follow these steps. They're very straightforward. Um, if you can't remember them, go ahead and just copy them, put them into a notepad because they require you to have your browser off. So I'll go down to search and I will search for the server manager. Basically just following the steps there. And then I'll click on local server. And I'll go over to IE enhanced security configuration. And we're going to click on on and turn it to off on both. And click OK. And in order to check if that worked, go ahead and go up here to the top and click refresh. And you'll now see that it's in the off setting. So now we can go ahead and close that and we're going to start setting up our server. I'm going to open up Internet Explorer and go download Google Chrome. This is a good opportunity to do that if you'd like to. You don't have to. It just makes things a little easier. So then we'll type in Nginx Griffin in a search engine and come to the index of download link below and come over here to 17113. And we're going to save that. All right, once you have that downloaded, go ahead and make a new folder on the desktop and title it Nginx. And we're going to go ahead and extract the uh, Nginx Griffin download that we just got over to that folder. Perfect. So once you have Nginx installed here, go to the comp file and scroll down and find nginx-win.conf and open with, right click and open with try apps on this PC and click notepad we're gonna open up, it looks a little scary at first, don't worry I'm just gonna minimize it to not scare you as much I guess um, all we're gonna do is go and open up a web page here and we're just gonna add some code in so go and open up Chrome um, and type in OBS Nginx RTMP and the very first one should be how to set up your own private RTMP server using Nginx so scroll down and find this big chunk of code here and just select all of that and we're gonna go ahead and uh, just drag it over to our conf file make sure you put a return in first and then put all of your code in and then go up here to file and save as this is a very important part you do uh, make sure you save this as a different name. So we're not going to just save it again. We don't want to replace it. We want to make our own. So we're going to put .conf at the end. Make sure it's all files, not just a text document. And we're going to get rid of the dash win. So we'll have nginx.conf save as all files. We'll have this new file here. And then go ahead and open it again. Make sure it works. Just look at it. Mine did this. Didn't put the return in. So I just put that back. Saved it. And we're good to go. So right now, if you just try to launch your Nginx server, it won't work quite yet. Uh, first, we need to go and download some Microsoft redistributables, visual redistributables. Uh, we need a 2010 SP1. Both of the links are down below. I'm going to type it in here so you can see. And so just make sure you download both the links ending in 8328 and 13523. I just opened them in new windows and uh, click download on each of them. It's a very quick process. Just download, install, download, install. Easy peasy. I'll show you quickly how it's done. And while these are installing, I just want to give a huge shout out to Impulse9. Follow him. Without him, I would not have been able to put this together. I would not have been able to have an RTMP server. 
He has helped me so much with everything. Every little question, uh, just give him a follow. He's a great guy. So now that those are done, I remembered one more thing we have to do in order to make this work. We have to set a Windows Firewall uh, rule. So go ahead and open your Windows Firewall, make an inbound rule, go to New Rule, and uh, go to Port, and we're going to click Next, and then put in Port 80 for the first one, and allow the connection, Next, 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 and we'll just call it the Web. And we're going to make it the same rule outbound. And for our second rule, same process. I like to start with inbound again, uh, new rule, and port. And this is for the Nginx server, 1935. And same for outbound. Okay, now we can go ahead and go to our Nginx folder, and we can finally launch Nginx with a double click. Not a triple click, a double click. Okay, and then click Run, and it will disappear right away, but you will just go down to the Search and Task Manager, and you will see, boom, success. We have it running. That's all we need. So we can go ahead and close things down. It doesn't matter. We won't be needing this for now. We can go ahead and go back to our desktop and we need to set up the last few parts. So now to test if our Nginx server is even working, go back to your Amazon Web Services page and grab the public DNS. And just grab that and put that into a new web page and click enter. Boom, so we have welcome to Nginx, success. So now that we have our RTMP server running, we need to do the next steps in order to make it so that we can handle our RTMP server on OBS. So first we need to figure out how to get our phone connected to the RTMP server. And to do that I use Streamlabs Mobile. If you go to the App Store, just type in Streamlabs. That's a very popular app. Grab that and then you're going to want to go on into the app and in the top left corner you'll see the little two bars there. Go ahead and click those bars and you'll see settings in the bottom click that and you'll go to streaming platform and under custom RTMP server that's where we're gonna put the server that we just made and to do that we need to figure out how to put the link in and the link looks like this it'll say RTMP colon slash slash then it'll say the address that we just made so your IP will look similar to this if you made it on Amazon Web Services it might be a regular IP address uh, but punch yours in, and then we will put in slash live. And that's all you need to do to connect to your RTMP server from your phone. So then we need to figure out if it's even working. So we have this RTMP IP address slash live punched in our phone right now in the custom RTMP server line, and we need to figure out if it even works. So we're going to go ahead and download VLC Media Player which uh, can handle RTMP sources. Uh, one thing I've heard is that you have to make sure you get the 64-bit version in order to handle network streams. I'm not sure if it's true, but just a good idea. So download that, go through the installation process. I already had it installed. I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's very straightforward. Okay, so we're going to open VLC Media Player, but first we're going to need to find for our network stream the IP address. So go back to what your IP address is here, and you're going to have it say RTMP colon slash slash your server, whatever your IP is, slash live 
and then slash anything. But here, here's the weird part is that it, it won't accept the public IPv DNS, I think is what it was, but it'll accept the public IPv4. So you have to kind of dumb your IP back down to a normal IPv4 public IP, which is right underneath the public DNS. You could just grab that. But I'm just kind of showing you how you could just take that code right out and just put some periods in and make it an IP. So then you're going to go ahead and punch that exact line into your open network stream here and click play. And if you get a connection, boom, you know that it's working. So now your RTMP service is grabbing your phone signal and it's sending it through VLC media player. So now that we know that the connection from our phone to our RTMP server is active, um, we need to figure out a way to grab our our RTMP server in OBS. And to do that, you need to go in and add just a media source. And once you create that, you'll see this screen here. And you're going to want to uncheck local file and basically just grab that same IP uh, code, RTMP code that we just had in VLC and place it in OBS. Now bear in mind that anytime you're trying to test your stream, you have to be live on your phone for it to show up. So if you're not live yet, it won't show. So I'm going to click live here to show that it's working, test it, and boom, there it goes. So now our phone signal is sent to our RTMP server. Our RTMP server is sending it back to OBS on our home PC. Your home PC then sends it to Twitch like normal as if you were streaming from home. I'll just resize my window, make sure it covers the whole thing, and we're good to go. And the great part is that we still get our BRB screen, we get all our alerts up here, we, get, we can customize it as if it's still a home PC, but we're streaming from our phone in IRL. And that way when you lose connection from your phone, you're not actually going offline at home, so your viewers won't see an offline ever, unless your home PC disconnects. So then you wonder, how do you control OBS if you're not at home though? And of course there is a plugin for this. So pull up a web browser and type in OBS WebSocket plugin. And you're going to want to click the very first one. It's OBS Open Broadcaster Software, the official website. Uh, you could just click download. I don't really know why I didn't. I started looking around for the latest update. Uh, don't worry about this part, but you know, click the latest update, click the most recent download, and go ahead and install that. So I already had it installed, but basically you just install it, you right click it, run it. Um, it'll install basically directly to where OBS Studio is. You have to have OBS Studio for this to work. I, th I tried it with Streamlabs as my browser at home, it doesn't work. So back to OBS for this. And uh, now you see right here in tools, you'll see WebSocket server settings. Um, and how you use WebSocket server here is you open a browser and you can do this from your phone. So this is how you do it. You'd be at the beach and you type in uh, OBS remote and it's OBS tablet remote is what it's called. It's kind of a weird uh, link. I have it below and you have to make sure you port forward 4444 uh, from your home PC running OBS and connect to your network and boom. So here we are in the app online from a browser which I could be doing this from my phone and I can click the BRB screen and it goes away. I can click back and we're at the scene. There's a little bit of a delay with when you change scenes with the RTMP source, but hey, we have a solid connection from IRL. So I hope you liked this video. I hope it helped you. If you did, subscribe, like, comment, share it, tell the world. Let's get some more IRL streamers out there. Have a good one. Take care. Be good.